In this video, we're going to be looking at question 21 of the Unit 2 sample paper for the Edexcel IAS Chemistry. If you want to check out the multiple choice question 19 or 20, have a look on the playlist for the walkthrough answers. This question is going to be focusing on topic 6, which is energetics, and looking specifically at the decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate down to sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. And the question tells us that this happens by heating to approximately 300 degrees. So part A is looking for a reason why it is not possible to measure the enthalpy change for this reaction directly. And the biggest issue here is simply that if you heat a substance it is going to mask any change in temperature because you don't know, are you measuring the change in the temperature of the actual decomposition or are you simply measuring the temperature of the heat or the Bunsen burner or your heat source? Alternatively, you can also look at it from another way and say that at 300 degrees Celsius, water is in the gas phase or is gaseous, not liquid. And what we want here is liquid. And that is going to have an effect on your overall enthalpy change. So either heating the substance masks your temperature change or the water is going to be a gas, not a liquid at 300 degrees. Part B is looking at what is the standard enthalpy change of formation. This is such a common question where they ask you the definition of one of your enthalpy change reactions and it's so important that you know the definition of each of them and there are a couple of key things that always come up all enthalpy changes are all linked to one mole so this in case it is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance and in this case, it's formation, so it is formed, and it is formed from elements, and most importantly, they must be in their standard states. So all enthalpy changes are linked to one mole of something. If it's combustion, it's when one mole is completely burned. If it's neutralization, it's the formation of one mole of water. You just have to make sure that you're getting the correct definition. But they do ask this quite a lot, so it is important for you to know. And we now, for part two, want to complete the Hesse cycle that we would use to determine the enthalpy change for this reaction from the standard enthalpy changes of formation. So we have to think about, OK, what elements are actually present here? So if I just make it a bit bigger, you can see that we have got some sodium and sodium should be a solid. Of course, it is a metal. We have some hydrogen and hydrogen is a diatomic and it is, of course, a gas. We have got some carbon and carbon should be solid in the form of graphite you can usually get away with just writing solid and not necessarily having the graphite and then of course we have oxygen which is also diatomic and is a gas so these are the elements that are going to have to go in that bottom box so i'm going to write in my any solid my h2 gas my carbon and i'm just going to write solid for the sake of space here plus my oxygen as a gas. And with any reaction, in any Hesse cycle, it must be balanced. You have to look at how much of each of these am I going to have to have in order to make these substances. And it doesn't matter whether you balance using the left hand side of the cycle or the right hand side of the cycle. They will both give you the same amount. I would recommend doing the one that is the least difficult. And in this case, it's going to be the left hand side because we only have one substance. So if I'm making two moles of NaHCO3, how much of each of these do I need? Well, I obviously need two sodiums. I need two hydrogens, but I already have that because the hydrogen is diatomic. Carbons, I need two of them. So I'm going to have to put a two 
in front of the two CS. And for the oxygens, I need a total of six. So this is going to require three O2. And that is going to be everything that I need to complete my HESA cycle. You would get one mark for your elements and one mark for your coefficients and your standard states. Part three is now asking us to do the standard enthalpy change for this thermal decomposition using the information in the table and your completed cycle. And we always, of course, want to include a units and a sign in the answer. So what I'm actually going to do here is rather than doing it underneath, I'm going to go back to my HESA cycle and I'm going to label everything. So my standard enthalpy change of formation for the sodium hydrogen carbonate is minus 950.8. So that is going to go on the left hand side. So minus 950.8. And because there are two of them for two moles, I have to multiply that by two, which gives me a value of minus 1901.6 for my delta H1. For delta H2, I need to add the values for sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. So I'm going to take them all from this table here. So the minus 1130.7, minus 393.5, and minus 285.8. And I'm just going to label them all at the side here. And of course, I can add them all together, and that gives me a value of minus 1810. Now what I can look at is how do I actually figure out the HESA cycle? And there are a couple of ways that you can look at this. You can either look to flip the arrows or you can look to follow the arrows. And what we're basically saying is I want to go from the sodium hydrogen carbonate down to my substances in the box and then back up. And when you flip the arrow, that causes you to get a positive answer or the opposite answer. In this case, it would be a positive. So instead of my delta H1 being minus 1901.6, it's going to become plus 1901.6. And I keep my other side exactly the same. And now my delta RH is going to be the delta H1 plus the delta H2, which in reality is going to be the 1901.6 minus the 1810, which gives me an overall answer of 91.6 kilojoules per mole. And it is a positive, so I'm going to put the positive sign. And that's four marks. That would be the answer to this question here. So making sure to include a sign and units, well, we've done that with the plus 91.6 kilojoules per mole. That's going to be one mark for the sign, one mark for the units. We get one mark for doing the multiplication correct and the other marks for applying Hess's law in the correct way. And then part four, the last part to this 11 mark question is then using the answer to part B or using our enthalpy change to draw an enthalpy level diagram for this reaction, labeling the axes provided. Well, we know that it is an endothermic reaction because we said it was plus 91.6 kilojoules per mole. That must mean that our reactants are going to be a lower amount of energy than our products. So here we don't need to draw an activation energy, no curve, anything like that. It is just focusing on the enthalpy change. So my label is enthalpy and I'm going to draw a straight line with my two NaHCO3 solid. And then my products are going to be at a higher amount. It doesn't have to be to scale. It is using a, a sketch. And we're going to have our sodium carbonate, our carbon dioxide, just taken straight from that target equation, plus our water. Let's just extend that line. 
So these are our reactants and products taken straight from this target equation here, making sure that our reactants are lower than our products. And then we have a straight line pointing up, making sure it is a single headed arrow pointing upwards and label that as my delta H of the reaction, which is plus 91.6 kilojoules per mole. So showing your marks here for getting your reactants and your products the correct way round and having each of them labelled. And then the other mark for correctly having your arrow pointing always from the reactants to the products. Never use a double headed arrow and never have the arrow pointing from products to reactants. It is always pointing reactants to products. Now that's 11 marks covering Hess's law and your enthalpy level diagrams. If you've got any questions on this energetics question, please feel free to leave a comment below and check back on the playlist for the remaining questions of this paper.